Welcome to a special edition of Beyond the Text. In this unique series, we delve deep into the intellectual history of some of the world's most influential philosophers and political theorists. Join us as we explore the profound insights, groundbreaking ideas, and enduring legacies of these great minds in Beyond the Text, Thinkers. In each episode, we take you on a journey through time and ideas, from the ancient wisdom of Aristotle to the modern brilliance of John Locke, we unearth the foundations of human thought, discover how their philosophies shape societies and continue to influence our world today. Through meticulous research and engaging storytelling, Beyond the Text Thinkers uncovers the personal lives, controversies and intellectual transformations of these luminaries. Join us on this cerebral adventure where the past meets the present and philosophy takes centre stage. So welcome to Beyond the Text Thinkers. Welcome to Beyond the Text Thinkers. I'm your host, Samuel Woodall, and today we're delving even deeper into the world of Enlightenment philosophy, with a focus on one of its most influential thinkers, Jean-Jacques Rousseau. In this extended exploration, we'll unravel the life and ideas of Jean-Jacques Rousseau and discover how his philosophy has left an undying mark on the course of history. But before we embark on this intellectual journey, don't forget to subscribe and share this podcast to help us continue exploring the profound ideas that have shaped our world. Jean-Jacques Rousseau was born in Geneva in 1712 and a man of remarkable talents. He was not merely a philosopher, but also a writer and a composer, such as the opera Le Divan de Overture. His legacy is particularly tied to his groundbreaking treatise, The Social Contract, which remains a cornerstone of political philosophy. Rousseau's central argument in The Social Contract was that legitimate government must be based on the consent of the governed. This idea has resonated throughout the centuries, becoming a fundamental principle of modern democracy. It's the idea that the authority of government is derived from the will of the people, and it still shapes our political discussions and governance systems today. However, Rousseau's impact extended beyond political philosophy. He also delved into questions about human nature and education, proposing that humans are inherently good, but become corrupted by society. This was a radical departure from the prevailing belief of his time, which often portrayed humans as inherently selfish and immoral, particularly from a Christian perspective. Rousseau's ideas challenged this notion and continue to be debated, especially within feminist and post-colonial circles. As we dive deeper into the life and ideas of Jean-Jacques Rousseau, we'll explore how his philosophy evolved and influenced different intellectual movements. Let's start with Asaya Berlin's perspective, which highlights Rousseau's concept of the noble savage as a fundamental inspiration for Romanticism. During the Romantic period, which swept across Europe in the late 18th and early 19th centuries, artists and writers embraced a new perspective on humanity. They were captivated by the idea that humans are at their best when close to nature and away from the corrupting influence of society. This concept, often associated with Rousseau's noble savage, painted the canvas for a new era of creativity. The Romantic movement celebrated emotion, individualism and a deep connection to nature. Think about the romantic poetry of William Wordsworth, who wrote about the beauty and spiritual significance of the natural world. This connection to Rousseau's ideas is evident, as Wordsworth and other Romantic poets were clearly influenced by the philosopher's vision of a more genuine and unspoiled existence. Rousseau also had an impact on the precursory movement to the Romantics, the Sturm und Drang literary movement in Germany. His ideas about the natural goodness of man, the corrupting influence of society, and the importance of emotional authenticity resonated deeply with Sturm und Drang writers, such as Goethe. They embraced Rousseau's call for the rejection of societal conventions and the celebration of individual emotions and passions. This influence can be seen in the movement's focus on intense emotional experiences, rebellion against established norms, and a desire for genuine, unfiltered self-expression in their works. Rousseau's ideas provided a philosophical underpinning for the passionate and tumultuous literary expression that defined the Sturm und Drang movement.
Turning away from the romantics and the Sturm und Drang, Jonathan Israel offers a different perspective on Rousseau's role in shaping Enlightenment thought. While the Enlightenment is often associated with reason, science and rationality, Rousseau's emphasis on individual freedom and equality brought a more radical dimension to this era. The Enlightenment was an intellectual movement that spanned the 17th and 18th centuries, characterised by a belief in the power of reason and human progress. Thinkers like Voltaire and Montesquieu were prominent figures in the movement, advocating for civil liberties, religious tolerance and the separation of powers. But Rousseau introduced a more radical and humanistic perspective. In his work, he stressed the importance of individual freedom and equality, which challenged the status quo. Rousseau's ideas laid the groundwork for more radical Enlightenment thinkers, who pushed the boundaries of societal change and human rights. His philosophy was a beacon for those who believed in the potential of humanity to shape a more just and equal society. Now let's turn our attention to Quentin Skinner's perspective. He focused on Rousseau's political theory and the influence of his ideas on the development of modern democracy. Skinner argued that Rousseau's conception of the social contract established the idea of popular sovereignty as a cornerstone of democratic thought. Popular sovereignty is a crucial concept in modern politics. It means that the ultimate authority in a state rests with the people. The government governs with the consent of the governed. This idea resonates with contemporary debates about democracy and governance. As we grapple with questions about the legitimacy of governments, representation and the power of the people, Rousseau's philosophy remains relevant. But the relevance of Rousseau's ideas doesn't stop at political philosophy. His work continues to shape discussions in various academic circles. Feminist scholars such as Carol Pateman have drawn on Rousseau's ideas to explore gender dynamics and power relationships within society. Carol Pateman's examination of Rousseau's theories reveals a significant gap in his contractual critiques. While Rousseau's writings provide compelling insights into social contracts and the nature of governance, they do not extend to the inclusion of women in this framework. Pateman highlights Rousseau's reinforcement of gendered sexual and marriage contracts, asserting that civil order depends on the right of husbands over their wives, and that women are endowed with distinct natural attributes, relegating them to roles of facilitation within the domestic sphere. This perspective aligns with Pateman's argument that, according to Rousseau, women are unable to develop the morality necessary for participation in civil society. Consequently, women find themselves confined to Rousseau's concept of a haven of family life within the private or natural realm, while men engage in the social contract, ultimately reducing women to subjects of the sexual contract. Additionally, Rousseau's distinction between the moral attributes of men and women leads to the notion that Emile must prepare to battle the opposing sex to safeguard his citizenship from the perceived corruption of women. This battle culminates with Emile becoming Sophie's master for the whole life, thereby encapsulating the essence of the marriage contract as expounded by Pateman. In the realm of post-colonial studies, thinkers like C. Wright Mills have explored the implications of Rousseau's ideas for understanding the impact of colonialism and imperialism on societies and cultures. Mills' interpretation of Rousseau's ideas sheds light on the complexity of Rousseau's perspective. Unlike a thinker like Hobbes, who established a stark dichotomy between a literal and hypothetical state of nature along racial lines, Rousseau introduced a more nuanced concept, where everyone was initially savage but noble. However, a closer examination of Rousseau's second discourse reveals that the only natural savages he cited were non-white. Influenced by the era's colonialism and Rousseau's idealization of tribal life in North America. This perception is not only an exercise in artificial primitivism, but also a misreading of history. Rousseau's omission of advanced civilizations in the global south, such as the Aztec and Inca empires, which had interactions with Europe, reflects a failure as a historian and reinforces what Mills terms the racial contract. 
This oversight undermines any notion of racial parity in Rousseau's state of nature, giving in to imperial tropes and historical inaccuracies. Even Rousseau's celebrated noble savage concept, according to Mills, is symptomatic of artificial primitivism, positioning it in opposition to the developed, albeit corrupt, European mind, which only perpetuates the civilised savage dichotomy of the racial contract. Before we wrap up our extended exploration of Jean-Jacques Rousseau, let's take a moment to delve into his most intriguing and personal work, Confessions. Confessions is Rousseau's autobiographical masterpiece. It's a window into the soul of a man who played a pivotal role in shaping the Enlightenment era. In this work, Rousseau bears his thoughts, emotions and experiences, providing a unique glimpse into his life and the intellectual climate of his time. The Confessions is divided into two books and covers the 53 years of Rousseau's life. It's an intimate journey through his childhood, his experiences as a young man and his rise as a prominent intellectual figure. But it's not a mere autobiography, it's a deeply reflective and confessional piece of literature. In Confessions, Rousseau delves into the joys and sorrows of his life. He candidly admits his flaws and mistakes, portraying himself as a complex and often contradictory individual. His honesty is both refreshing and disarming as he shares intimate details of his life, from his romantic escapades to his struggles with depression and alienation. Confessions is more than a personal narrative, it's a reflection on the human condition. It challenges the prevailing norms of his time, offering a glimpse of the inner turmoil that often lies behind the polished facades of society. Rousseau's willingness to reveal his vulnerabilities and innermost thoughts has made Confessions a timeless work, resonating with readers across centuries. It's important to note that Rousseau's Confessions was an innovative departure from the conventions of autobiography. He was not merely recounting events, but engaging in a deep self-examination. The self-exploration laid the foundation for the modern genre of autobiographical writing, influencing later thinkers and writers who were inspired by this introspective style. In Confessions, Rousseau also touches upon his philosophical ideas and the circumstances that led him to develop his groundbreaking concepts. His personal experiences are intricately linked with the intellectual evolution of his time. His musings on nature, society and the human condition are interwoven with the events of his life, providing valuable insights into the genesis of his philosophical works. To this day, Confessions remains a captivating read for anyone interested in the life and mind of Jean-Jacques Rousseau. It's a testament to his willingness to confront the complexities of human existence and an enduring legacy of his impact on both literature and philosophy. As we conclude our extended journey through Rousseau's life and ideas, I encourage you to explore Confessions to gain a deeper understanding of the man behind the philosophy. It's a work that offers both intellectual and emotional insight into the profound thinker who has left an indelible mark on our world. I'd like to leave you with a passage from Confessions which encapsulates my interest in Rousseau and defines why I believe he is such a pivotal and unique philosopher. I am not made like any of those I have seen. I venture to believe that I am not made like any of those who are in existence. If I am not better, at least I am different. Whether nature has acted rightly or wrongly in destroying the mould in which she cast me can only be decided after I have been read. In our next episode, we'll top up what we've already learned today in our philosophical journey. We'll explore Rousseau's discourse on the arts and sciences, his first discourse that has intrigued thinkers throughout history and continues to captivate our imaginations. Join us for another enlightening discussion 
And until then, keep pondering the profound ideas that have shaped our history. If you enjoyed this episode, please like, share and subscribe. And if you have any suggestions for future topics, feel free to reach out. Have a great day and keep exploring the rich tapestry of human thought that lies beyond the text.